Hello everyone and welcome to a very weird game from the 2019 uh, Riga FIDE Grand Prix. It's uh, Shakhtar Mamidjarov uh, versus Wesley. So this is game one of the classics. Uh, so we are in the semi-finals. Uh, and uh, well, uh, as you've seen, if you've been cover uh, watching uh, my short coverage or if you've been following the live feed, uh, Wesley has been playing really well lately and Mamidjarov, he's had a few shaky tournaments, uh, but he did uh, get a son. So, you know, it's to be expected. You have to uh, get used to new things in life. So this game is going to be really weird. Uh, I, I'm warning you uh, before that. Let's uh, just check two photos from this matchup. So here it is. Uh, here is Mamidjarov. Uh, just you know uh, saying I I'm cool with that line you know I know it pretty well don't don't really care and here's a nice close-up of Wesley uh, trying to figure out if Mamedyarov really knows the line well or if maybe he's just bluffing <clears throat> uh, but uh, don't want to overbuild the suspense so let's just check out the game Mamedyarov with the white pieces opens with d4 and of course you all know where this is going knight of six c4 e6, knight f3, and d5, we have the queen's gambit decline. But here, uh, Mavioro goes for g3. He wants, uh, he prefers a Catalan setup in this uh, game. Uh, bishop to e7, and now bishop to g2, fianchettoing the light square bishop, with castles by Wesley and castles by Mamidyarov. Uh, D captures on c4, and now knight to e5, and Wesley goes for knight to c6, the famous triple c-pawn variation. Uh, with knight captures, b captures, and now knight to a3, White wouldn't mind uh, grabbing one of these pawns and uh, uh, getting the knight to a much nicer square. But here, bishop captures on a3. Uh, it's the mostly played move in this line uh, and pawn capture. So if you look at this position, you might think uh, everything you know about chess is just wrong. Black has tripled pawns. He already gave up a bishop pair. Uh, how, how can black even play this? Well, uh, uh, you'll see. Practice shows that it is possible to play this position uh, well without a problem with black. Uh, so few, uh, two most uh, standard ideas here as black, white is uh, controlling this beautiful diagonal already threatening to capture on c6. Black will either go knight to d5 here, just uh, plays the knight to a much nicer square, uh, or as in this game, bishop to a6. So you can give up this c6 pawn, but like we said, it's a triple c pawn. You don't really want to waste a move grabbing one of the pawns. You'll be able to you know, gobble them up uh, anytime throughout the game. So what do you do here? Here, Mamidaro plays queen to d2, and it is a strange move. Why would you block your bishop like this? Uh, the problem is uh, Mamidaro wants to play queen to d2 and queen to a5 to attack this bishop. The problem is if you try and do it uh, with queen to a4, then black gets to move the bishop uh, with an attack on the queen. So black will not be wasting any time. You will now have to move your queen, and then black gets to play whatever he wants. And the a7 pawn is still protected. So with this queen to d2 idea, uh, white shifts the move to black, and now now black has to make a move. So rook b8, it's a useful move, the b file is already open and only now queen to a5. And now you don't really have the option of playing bishop to b5 anymore because now a4 just traps the bishop. So here rook to b8 is in preparation of rook to b6, uh, black's plan is to play something like queen d6, get the rook over to b8, double up rooks on the b file and then slowly but surely start pushing the past c pawn. Now uh, all, all this might seem very weird, why did black have triple c pawn, why, why isn't white reacting to this? This. Why is he allowing black to have the triple C pawn, uh, the, the past pawn on C4? But, uh, you know, practice showed that it's it's perfectly fine. Uh, with A4 by white, uh, and now queen to D6. Capturing on D4 uh, is giving white too much activity. If you capture on D4, then bishop to A3 attacks the rook. And here you might consider giving up an exchange with pawn to C3. Uh, start pushing your past pawn. But if this was any good, someone would already have played it. Uh, your other option is to just move the rook. You can't go to d8 because rook d1 would just uh, be, be terrible for you. So you play something like this and then rook uh, f d1 kicks away the queen and you have so much I mean activity. Look at the, the bishop pair here. Uh, the queen controls this rank. The rook slices the board in half. Uh, it's just all, all, you know, uh, all around control for white. So Wesley continues uh, with queen d6. It's the main move in this position. And here what uh, what is Wesley planning? Wesley wants to get the rook over to b8, he wants to double up rooks on the b file, also queen b4 is an option, you might want to uh, try and force a queen trade, and here uh, there are a couple of games that reach this position, I think 8 of them, where e4 is played threatening e5, or just queen to c3, uh, getting the queen uh, away, from, uh, away from this queen before threat, and also uh, uh, strengthening the, the 
d4 pawn. Uh, but here Mamadiarov played a new move, he played a3, he just says, okay, you can play whatever you want with black, I'm not allowing you queen to b4, and uh, let's just see what you play. So of course, uh, all of black's pieces are doing something, the queen uh, is very nicely centralized, the rook is guarding the bishop, you don't really want to move the bishop as you're going to lose the a7 pawn, the knight is on a nice square, at some point it's going to come to d5, but uh, you still need to develop your rook. So rook f to b8, doubling rooks on the b file, and only now Mamidiaro goes for e4, threatening e5. Uh, but here, uh, Wesley played something very interesting, he played c3. Uh, which makes sense, uh, it's a pass pawn, you want to push your pass pawns, pass pawns must be pushed, and also it comes with an attack against the rook on f1, but this uh, move isn't only bad, it's, uh, it loses the game. Uh, so feel free to pause the video and try to figure out what Wesley missed in this position. Uh, while I give you a couple of seconds, uh, it's the move we already discussed, so congratulations because I know all of you found it, it's e5, uh, and Wesley just missed it for some reason now. It's very interesting how would uh, su such a strong player like Wesley miss such a move. Well, I think it's just a case of over-preparation as uh, sometimes uh, even Mamidara, we've covered a game not so long ago, he suffered uh, a case of over-preparation where he played a brilliant uh, game up until move 23, but all, all those moves were engine lights and then when he had to make uh, the first move from his head, then he just uh, collapsed. Uh, so here Wesley pretty much did the same thing. He played every top move and then when he had to start playing uh, games, uh, you know, using his uh, uh, using his own uh, uh, head, uh, then he just blundered. Uh, I'm sure c3 is a move that is played in a lot of the lines that he prepared, but it's not played here. Uh, and uh, I don't know, this often happens to you. It's one of the reasons why I never enjoyed uh, over-preparing games because then it's very hard to shift into this mode where you're playing, uh, you know, theory moves where you're safe, uh, uh, safe uh, from any dangers because you know you're safe and then when you have to make a move uh, by yourself it just goes downhill from there. So here uh, of course you have to react, your queen is under attack and now you will uh, have to give up two pieces for the rook. Uh, we have queen to d8 and now e captures on f6 and now there's no better move other than to capture the rook that is why you played c3 uh, we have bishop captures on f1 bishop captures on f1 and now c2 and okay wesley already has a pass pawn on c2 uh, but still uh it's two bishops for a rook and the, the bishop pairs uh, will easily fight off a queen let alone a rook so i haven't seen the interview after the game but i don't know i, I really don't think that this line is something wesley prepared at home especially not for a classical game maybe if it was blitz maybe but I don't know uh, if, if this uh, is something Wesley prepared for for a classical game against Mamedyarov and uh, worst of all rook a2 just picks up the pawn you you, you can't really defend uh, the the past pawn uh, so queen d5 Wesley now offers a queen trade as the rook on a2 is under attack so you do have to react to this and uh, Mamedyarov trades although uh, it seems like you have to trade but you really don't you also can play queen to d2 uh, a very interesting move, and now if uh, white captures, then queen to g5, uh, threatening mate, and of course if uh, if just g6, then queen to h6, followed by queen g7 mate, and here it's just uh, uh, game lost for black, you have to start running away, but it will not help you, uh, just, you know, some check here, capture here, and, uh, well, slowly but surely you will checkmate the black king, uh, not even going to show the line as it's just, uh, you know, game over for black. So, uh, uh, Mamidarov would have probably played the queen to d2 if this was the only winning line, but Mamidarov is uh, very confident that he will beat Wesley in this endgame. So he just trades queens. Uh, we have c captures on d5, rook captures on c2, g captures on f6, and now rook captures on c7. So it's two bishops for a rook, and Wesley showed in the game uh, where he defeated Sergei Karakin that two bishops are uh, uh, even uh, sometimes even even stronger than a queen, so a rook will have a little chance uh, fending, off those, fending off those bishops. So what's left to do is to get the king to safety and to get those bishops fully operational. So let's see how uh, Mamidyarov will do this. First, Wesley offers a trade. Mamidyarov declines this, uh, and now king to g7, uh, starting to bring the king into the game. Mamidyarov does the same. Uh, we have rook to b1, and now just uh, bishop to b5, disconnecting the rooks. And now how are you getting this rook into the game? 
it's not going to be easy. Yes, you can play rook k1 to a2, but still, uh, the bishop covers this square, rook covers this square, uh, bishop covers uh, d2 as well, the light square, bishop covers this square. You don't really have a way of getting this rook back into the game. So now, white can pretty much improve his position as much as he wants uh, until he decides if he will let the rook into the game. So rook to a1 by Wesley, but still that rook is not getting into the game. Rook to c3, uh, we have rook to b6, and now bishop to f4. Here Mamedyarov allows it, but uh, w with a uh, with an idea. He, he does have some plans of trapping this rook here, but also he has plans of rook to c7 followed by bishop here, which will uh, be very dangerous for the black king. So first rook to b7, getting uh, not allowing Mamedyarov this rook, rook to c7 lift, but still, if... Uh, if you want, you can play it and trade, but Mamedyarov doesn't. He just starts bringing his king into the game. We have rook to d1, now threatening the d4 pawn, but now bishop to e3, just defending it. Rook back to b1, and now king to g4. Uh, we have rook to h1, attacking the h2 pawn, but now uh, pawn to h4. King to g6, and now just bishop back to d3. And now, the thing we discussed, the bishops are now fully operational. You have to defend with f5, defending from check and delivering check himself. King to f3, uh, rook to d1 by Wesley, and now g4. And uh, it was in this position on move 34 that Wesley so resigned the game. He resigned because there's very little to do here. Uh, slowly but surely, uh, you will lose this game. Uh, you have to play something, let's say king g7, you will just capture a pawn here, captures, captures, and now you have uh, so many uh, options how, how to win this game, you can just go rook here, followed by check, maybe rook goes here then, uh, it's uh, w one idea, the other is maybe you just bring the king over here, and then bring the bishop in, bring the rook somewhere, uh, and while you're doing all that, black doesn't really have any, any good moves. Uh, so Wesley knows this, and after g4, he resigned the game, which is uh, very weird. We, we just said that Wesley had a really uh, awesome uh, <laughs> undefeated streak. I don't know how long it was, but it was fairly long in classical time format. And then he just uh, gives it up uh, because he, he still thought that he was uh, still in, you know, uh, protected waters of theory, uh, where in fact he wasn't. Uh, Mamedyarov uh, introduced a new move here, a3, and Wesley just played c3, probably one of the lines that uh, works in every other line except in this one that Mamedyarov played, which is really strange, and that's why uh, over-preparing is very dangerous, and you should always be very careful when you do it in your own games, uh, because it's very hard to switch, you know, into thinking, uh, at least for me. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, tough break for Wesley, but he still has one more classical game to get back to, uh, to Mamedyarov and, uh, you know, not get knocked out of the FIDE Grand Prix. So still, you know, it's anyone's game. Anyone can reach the finals. Uh, Wesley has the white pieces and you all know how dangerous Wesley is with white. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Petrus Adrianus Cornelis uh, van uh, Gisbergen for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Uh, continuing the Capablanca saga, covering the Fide Grand Prix, and of course, checking up on your suggestions. Thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.